you touched a moment ago, if I could just go back to it, to the sort of authoritarianism that we've seen around uh, the enthusiasm for lockdowns and control of the public in the context of uh, COVID-19. What would Reclaim's perspective on, on that new authoritarianism and the desire, it seems, of people to be uh, uh, locked down at enormous cost because that cost is so high that it may very well mean that in most Western countries, the next generation of of um, our citizens, our children, will simply not have the jobs and the opportunities that we've taken for granted. It's appall- it's utterly appalling. I, I can see how it's happened, and I and I am empathetic to the sympathetic even to the to how it happened. We thought we were facing a very well, we didn't know what we were facing, but we thought we were facing a very deadly virus. And once you've once you've instilled fear into a population, it's very difficult to remove it. I imagine. So, in terms of the lockdowns, I don't believe. I've actually started to not believe the government polling. There's a, a polling organization called YouGov that says forty percent of people may continue to support lockdowns, whether there's any problem or not i think we're in a we're in a collective daydream that we we do have to wake up from carol sakura is saying there's going to be thirty five thousand uh unnecessary deaths from cancer as a result of these uh turning the national health service into the covid national health service and um and uh, sunitra gupta is saying there's gonna be 130 million dead worldwide as a result of our lockdowns and their lockdowns you know people in in much less privileged countries than ourselves, they can't afford to lock down. There is no infrastructure to stop, um, to support them through it. And we're, we're furloughing our our workers here, our public sector workers and private sector workers have been furloughed, but that, that will have to stop. I think what the government need to do is take, a, a, take on board what the Great Barrington Declaration is saying which is that we, the young people, need to take responsibility here. In the same way as in a time of war, the young men and women of this country need to stand up and go, OK, we're going to get on with our lives and we are going to get, we'll, we'll do all the important things that are safe, like trying to keep a bit of distance and, you know, keeping our good hygiene, but we need to get on with our lives. And then we protect and look after the elderly and the vulnerable. Uh, you know, and that doesn't just mean holistically and and personally, and and it means financially as well. So I think we're at a very certainly they're saying possibly two hundred thousand jobs in the hospitality sector in the UK will be gone in the coming weeks as the result of these new tier lockdowns that we've come in. And I feel the government are extremely reactive to it. And actually, what you need is someone to say we will get through this. Young people go out there and let the virus do what viruses do which is going to do anyway, which is work its way through the population and go from pandemic to endemic. And then we can essentially get on with our lives. But there's a dread fear, and it's also very uh, closely tied in to this woke religion. The problem of the woke religion, they've politicised COVID-19 to a point of if you're uh, pro-lockdown, you're a good person, and if you're pro-liberty, you're a bad person. But they have a they the religion of of woke doesn't have a savior other than yourself. So they have a huge problem with the idea of death. Whereas in the past, in the Christian societies, death was part of life and we were closer to it. In the woke religion, they're upset about death. I think a lot of them wouldn't be happy would be happy to be locked down until we'd solved death. And that shows how utterly bonkers it is. So I think a sort of a sensible a uh, sensible way of dealing with it, yeah, as laid out, I think is the right answer. As uh, someone who spent a lot of time in a reforming government where we actually obliterated public sector debt at a federal level in Australia, I look at Britain, a country I love and admire, I have to say, I'm not blind to its faults, never have been, I hope. But nonetheless, I think its contribution to civilization has been massive. There you go. That's what I think. Um, I find it deeply concerning that Britain's public finances are in a position that are now so, it is now so precarious that the impact on coming generations may be devastating. So if you're worried about staying alive now, what it will mean in terms of lost job opportunities or incapacity to fund the services people want, to look after people in old age and pensions and what have you, let alone maintain things like spending on infrastructure and roads and good schools, even defence. 
it's deeply concerning. Public sector debt is absolutely massive and exploding. And every time you go for more lockdowns, the economic implications for the future are very profound. But wokeness, of course, seems almost intent upon pretending economics doesn't matter. You can just print money. Well, you know, you produce an oversupply of anything. Sooner or later, you'll collapse the price of it, including money. It can't go on forever. You can't print money. You can't go on mounting debts indefinitely and still keep an open, free, prosperous and good society to live in. It doesn't happen. Mm. It's tragic. It's absolutely tragic. And and what's even worse is that is that they spent they encouraged people to to make their so certainly my local um pub down the road, he was in pieces, you know, for the first lockdown. And they said, right, we're gonna open you up, we'll open you can open back up. And they put a lot of measures in place. So they're spending a lot of money to make their places COVID secure anyway. And then they've just been told, No, you're you're you have to shut down again. It doesn't feel that there's a there's a we need a, we need somebody to stand up and say this is going to hurt a bit but we are going to get through it and what we're hearing now is we're hearing very dramatic language the health secretary here who how he's still in a job i have no idea um tweeting things like this virus is going to rip through the population and it's like why are you engendering fear in people and as you say the the future is looking extremely bleak if we continue to shut our economy down and we should we we can't do this with our debt, but no one wants to really. the The problem is because it's been politicised by the woke. They you're you're not compassionate. And I think that the Tories actually, sadly, would rather save a few fewer lives by having a strong COVID lockdown policy than they would save the hundreds and hundreds of lives that they're going to lose as a result of it and look good. There's no leadership. It's very tragic. Thank you for watching this episode. If you value vital conversations like this one, please like, share, subscribe, and join the conversation.